Hey folks, Jeff Eubanks, Eubanks Family Homestead, or Hobby Homestead is a way of life. The goat's eating your shirt. Get away from our goat. This is Lily, and that's Jill, the lush, the one that got drunk on the pumpkin. Nah. Uh, okay folks, we are down to one of my favorite times of the year. For the last 20 years, every year, I put out gourds for Purple Martins. And the time of their return is at hand. Today is February the 7th, 6th, 7th, whatever. I think the earliest I've ever had them back is on February the 12th. So anytime between now and the end of the month, we should have our first returning Purple Martins all the way from South America. They come to our happy homestead to nest in these plastic super gourds. These gourds right here are probably close to 20 years old and they still are great. So every year about this time, I come down here and I take out the old nesting material and try to, you know, spruce things up for their turning purple martins. So we're gonna do a little bit of martin gourd clean out. I have my ladder for climbing and so the first thing we gotta do is let the gourds down. This rope right here is getting old. It's gonna have to be replaced this season. I just haven't, I didn't stop by the Home Depot today to get some rope. So we're just gonna go ahead and do a clean out though. That way we have something to post on our YouTube channel. <laughs> Wasn't that cool? I am the designer and creator of this Purple Martin gourd rack. It holds 16 gourds. Um, these things here are aerial guards. Um, Martins have a variety of predators. One of them being the great horned owl, or the hoot owl as we call it, which we have here, here in... Uh, North Georgia. But these prevent uh, aerial attack because the the hawk or owl, I've even seen crows try to do it, they can't get up here to get a hold of the gourd. What happens is they'll get a hold with one one foot and uh, they'll thrash around on it till the, the martins finally come piling out and uh, then they grab them. Uh, matter of fact, some of these gourds actually have scratches on them from where uh, they've been uh, worked over by the owls. I don't know which one it is. But anyway, <clears throat> here's the access port. That one don't have anything in it. As far as cleaning out wise. Here we go. All right. That is what a purple martin nest looks like after a season of young being raised in it. And there's pine straw and anything else that they can pick up and uh, they make their own nest. I just started out with some pine straw that way they have something to work from. And too when they show up early in the spring it's, we still can have some cold weather and give them something kind of bed down in. But uh, I bought these super gourds through the Purple Martin Conservation Association. Go online and um, like I said, they're great gourds. I mean, these things are, they've got to be 20 years old and they are still in great shape. Uh, I did add, if you can see on the back of this one, this little PVC vent. <laughs> it's a 90 degree half inch PVC coupling. I mean, 90 degree PVC elbow. And all I did was drill the hole in here, put it in there and caulked it up. And that gives it a little bit of ventilation. And, uh, you know, I don't do a lot of cleaning to the outside, as you can see. They have patina on them. But uh, what you do, they have these cool access ports. And this is so you can check on your Martins. Now, the first few years I did a lot of that, but now I don't do that. I just put them back here. I put the gourds up. I leave them up. I used to take them in in the wintertime, but not anymore. I just leave them out. 
I don't know if I'm getting lazy, old, or what. But uh, these ports are so you can do a nest check or go in and remove the old nest material from last year. And you will come across sometimes eggs that didn't hatch out and sometimes uh, young that for whatever reason didn't survive. And yes, it does have a smell to it. So that's how you clean out a purple martin gourd. Now, usually I have a bucket here with um, pine straw. They love pine straw. And I put maybe two handfuls of pine straw in there. Boom, we're done. And now the step ladder is to reach these a little bit higher to get in to where you can see them. Now, this thing is like, I think it's 15 foot, 15 foot tall. Now, there's something here that I learned the hard way. Um, if you get to the side, come over here, honey bun. The gourds, they look like they're actually in line, but they're offset. What I found out is if you put them in a line, Mr. Martin would sit here and he would defend this one and this one. So one Martin would take up three gourds trying to attract a mate. So I come up with this brilliant idea to offset every other gourd. Now Mr. Martin sits here, he can't see Mr. Martin over here and Mr. Martin over there can't see him. So they're, they're out of the range of sight. And so one Martin defends and tries to attract a mate to one gourd. Um, I learned a lot on my own with gourds and uh, martins. Now I did get a, a book um, and I was going to have it out here for a visual reference, but I forgot it. And also the most uh, critical thing that helped me get martins because I mean we're in a pretty open spot. You got to have an open spot for martins, but they really like water because they drink on the wing, all this other stuff, you know, they drink flying. That's what I meant by drink on the wing. And I had a lot of trouble trying to attract them. Now my great granddaddy had a pole, according to my grandmother, right up here in our front yard for years. And he died in 1939. So, uh, but he had Martins every year. So there was a good space of time between when Grandpa Will had Martins and great grandson Jeff wanted to attract Martin. So what I did, I went on that Purple Martins Conservation Association site, the PMAC or PCAM, something like that. And I ordered the Dawn Song CD. Dawn, as in the day is dawning. The male Purple Martins, once they establish their territory in the mornings before daylight, they'll get up and they'll when I say get up, they'll come out of their gourds and fly up in the air and they fly circles around their site and they sing this song. It's called the Dawn Song. Well, they say one Purple Martin singing that Dawn Song can infiltrate 25 square miles of air. And other Martins will hear that, especially the newer returning Martins, the young Martins from last year. They call those sub-adults. They're the ones that you usually set up a site with. But they hear that old male up there singing that song, so they come in and check it out. And that's how they gather more potential mates into a Martin site. So uh, I got the Purple Martin CD, uh, put up some speakers, and started playing it. And the first year we put it up, we got Martins. And we've had Martins ever since. Uh, one year we got worked over by a great horned owl and we lost a lot. And I'm still trying to build up my numbers. We usually run, you know, 20 to 30 pair. You know, we got one, two, three gourd, gourd racks back here. And uh, now this year the Martins are going to be surprised because we've cut two big trees out of the backyard. And uh, they're going to like that a lot. I did not cut the trees down because they're dangerous to the, I mean, to prevent, to promote purple martinism. I cut it down because they were dangerous to the house. <laughs> so, so anyway, but yeah, this is uh, all this right here. Now, now this rack is nothing special. I mean, 
the perks of being a machinist and having access to machinery, I made all that and it works like a charm. Uh, we got a pulley system. We got one pulley up here on top of the rack and another pulley at the top of the pole, which makes it mucho easier to uh, come up and down. Now, <clears throat> it might squeak a little bit, but Now when I had fainting goats, when I let it down, they'd fall over. Now you might say, boy, that thing sure is a wobbling a lot. Well, if you notice, this pole is bent, and it's bent from a big windstorm. It's a one inch by half inch tubing, and uh, it did get bent in a big windstorm, but it's never fall, fallen over. And when it's full of nest and stuff like it is now it can be kind of heavy i have seen them with winches uh, i have not purchased a winch because right now i'm still you know strong enough to do that but a lot of the more mature martin landlords is what they call us people who host martins are called martin landlords they have to use a winch to get them up but uh they are just a beautiful bird they have a wonderful song they sing the song, they're just as happy as they can be. They eat bugs, that's all they eat. Now, I do have a platform feeder here. And uh, pay no attention to the leaning tower of platform feeders. Uh, somebody has been rubbing on it, probably Gus. Now, what I do, I put um, pine straw up there. I'm gonna use a little bit of hay as an example make believe this is big all right I put it up here and I got a little little wire up here I kind of strap it down when the Martins start making their nest they will empty one of these things in like a day and a half taking the nest material to the different bird mark uh, gourds now they do drop some but I do this to try to keep them off the ground because they're not very agile on the ground and they're easy prey for cats and stuff like that so I do that but this is this is very very ugly I understand that but it works wonderfully kind of like me but uh, <coughs> the um, the Martin CD the dawn song is needs to be played in the morning now they have CDs called daytime chatter I tried that I didn't have no luck but the dawn song was a trick and I would turn it on at like four or five o'clock in the morning whenever I got up to go to work and it would be on a timer and it would play up till like nine o'clock in the morning and uh you know just put it on cd player play loop and uh you know it worked and so it's just uh something neat to have to help you uh get martins if you're in a you know a good place to get them if you have martins in your uh neighborhood your home place whatever you call it you'll you'll have better luck too i plan on doing one of those live things this year when the martins first when they get here and get in pretty good numbers because i mean it's now, if you look toward the house, that's uh, 150 foot at least. Christy can hear them inside the house with their chatter. I can't. My hearing's not what it used to be. But she says she can hear them inside, and they can really, they can really make a lot of racket when they're out here, uh, you know, first in, in first of the year, you know, trying to attract mates. And it's so funny when uh, when Mr. Martin, who is just jet black, they're called purple martins because when the light hits them just right, they have a bluish purple sheen to them but the male the adult males the second year males are jet black the females are a drab color they have a white belly and the sub adults the, the the birds from last year it's very hard to to for me to identify them even but the you have to look at their the feathers in their chest to be able to determine a sub adult but when mr martin finds a gourd that he likes he will spend it seems like hours he'll go up Circle around, come right back in that gourd. Go up, circle around, come right back in that board. And the only thing I can figure is they're learning their gourd. Now they say that those martins, the brain can't be no bigger than that, folks. They will fly from South America, Chile, up here to, they go all the way into Canada still, but they will return to the same box 
and or gourd each year. How they do that, God only knows. And the funny thing is about these gourds. Now, when, when storms are coming up, I'll let my gourds down. You can change the height of the gourd. That doesn't bother the Martin a bit. He'll come and go. It doesn't matter. But if you change the compass orientation of the gourd, you lose your Martin. So he's got to know the entrance of that gourd in reference to the sun or some type of magnetical anomaly that we don't understand. And that's why I use square or rectangular tubing because it can't, it can't twist. A lot of people use round stuff, but I, I found out round stuff don't work too good the hard way. But uh, yeah, so that's, uh, and all this, you know, I made a little plate down here. This threaded rod holds it together. And then, you know, I just got a, a winch and pulley type system. And like I said, this, go, this rope right here is, uh, I think it was 3 8 rope. And I mean, it's still strong, but I feel like I'm really uh, pushing my luck with it. So it's got to be replaced this year. And to do that, I'm going to have to let the whole pole down because I got to, <laughs> well, see, the rope is actually tied off at the top, the very top. That's where the rope's tied off. And then it comes down and goes through this pulley and goes back up and goes through another pulley. And that, the more pulleys you run it through, the easier it is for it to, to you know, winch up and down. One of them winching things. So, but anyway, this is uh, what we do here on the homestead. Uh, we hope that you are a subscriber to our YouTube channel. If you're not, we would welcome you with open arms, air hug, uh, to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button. Hit that notification button and then tell your friends about it because we'll be uh, posting more videos about the Martins. Um, we're getting real close to, you know, starting our, our, uh, our little garden, our raised beds. And, you know, we really want people to, to watch that and, and subscribe. We, we're wanting to get subscribers. I would like to get to 100 subscribers. If I can do that this year, I'll be happy. And, uh, well, I'm happy anyway. I'm a happy guy. Can't you tell by looking at me? So, uh, but hit that like button subscribe uh, tell your friends about us uh, we're just plain old folks here uh, hope everybody's had a good day this Saturday kind of gloomy I've uh, I had to work and just now getting around to it uh, we uh, you know got to do what you got to do uh, I would ask everybody to uh, remember my uncle uh, in your prayers he's got the virus and he's in ICU and he's really having a rough time and we're real worried about my uncle James and uh, uh, prayer works, folks. So if you'll uh, uh, say a prayer from not only my my uncle, but there's it's, there's just so many people sick and suffering with this. So uh, once again, Eubanks Family Homestead or Hobby Homestead is a way of life. It's so good to see y'all. Uh, we'll be posting more videos. So uh, like, subscribe, and share. Peace out. Oh, by the way, <clears throat> I was just informed my, from my technical support unit here uh, that we actually have a video clip of uh, some activity with the Martins. So it's going to be added on to the end of the, prog uh, the, end of the program, end of this here uh, uh, broadcast. So uh, you'll be able to hear and see some of the stuff that we get to see on a regular basis. So uh, with that, oh, and I, got, I forgot this. We're going to have another installment of Purple Martin stuff. Purple Martins are cavity dwellers, and they are not set up to, to be big fighters. Well, there's an invasive species in the United States called the European starling, which, which love these cavities to nest in, which is, oh, this is, that, that's why we have this half moon shaped entrance. This is something that a starling can't get into. See, ordinarily, back in the old days, they had like a two inch diameter um, hole for the Martins. Well, the... Um, European starlings could go in there and they would kill and run the Martins off. So somebody, I forget what the cat's name was, but he came up with this design. It works real good. I remember the first year I put, I just put a few up like this. And I, when, I used, when I was using natural gourds and I couldn't have pushed one of those Martins through one of these things with a hammer. But then all of a sudden one of them figured it out. Man, they go in and out of them things like there's nothing. But I will be having a, um, a video about a starling trap that you can catch starlings and then do with them as you please. But if you catch a uh, native species, you turn them loose. They are not harmed in any way. 
it's a pretty neat trap and uh, that'll be put up as well so y'all just stay tuned for more information from eubanks family homestead